Mm -hmm. And it's going to be very interesting to see if Tarek and uh, Gray is going to be very aggressive on this Ezreal Soraka composition. Soraka, of course, is known as the healing definition of sustained support, whereas Ezreal is known for his 9 million ways to escape from a gang. So if Tarek and Gray are going to try to be aggressive on the bottom lane, I don't think it's going to work out uh, for them as well, unless they can get Soraka to blow her heal, because Soraka's heal at level 1 does have a 20 second cooldown, and I believe it only scales up to a 17 or 16 second cooldown at, towards the maximum levels. So if they can abuse those timers on Soraka's cooldown, they might be able to have a little bit of a better chance at maybe killing her in the bottom lane, but I don't really think it's going to work out if they're trying to snowball against Ezreal, because he just has way too many escapes. That's right, it's going to be difficult to catch Ezreal. He can always immediately arcane shift away if Tarek tries to stun him, so they're probably going to need some jungler help if they're going to try to pick up a kill in that lane. Soraka is quite weak, she really does need a couple levels. She needs to get about to level 5 and 3 points in her heal in order for it to really start uh, scaling up. So she actually is rather weak at the start of the game. Anyway, we are underway with both teams now. We are in the game. Neither one of these teams has an especially great level one team fight. They're both kind of, I guess, average. There are a couple skills that are decent, but nothing really groundbreaking. We don't have a Blitz or an Alistar in this game. So we will see if these teams decide to team fight. I don't see a, a huge obvious advantage for either side. Maybe slightly Absolute Legends because they do have Tarek stun and Anivia stun, but it's not really a, a game-defining edge for either one of these teams in the level one one fight. No, but taking a quick look at some of the uh, builds that they have, everybody's actually taking pretty much a mirror matchup build, except for Vladimir going to the top lane with the cloth armor to go against that physical damage of Wukong. I'm actually very interested in the Maokai pickup here, as he does start with 15 ability power, which means his runes and masteries are a little bit more offensive than what we're used to seeing on perhaps a 0 9 kind of style Maokai. We actually do have 52 armor on Vladimir, so that is the anti-Wukong uh, rune page and mastery page there, along with that cloth armor, so that's a very interesting start. We we do see Absolute Legends invading here at the red buff of TSM EVO, but it does look like they've been spotted, and it looked like uh, Aphromu and Natwin had no trouble getting out of that. No, perhaps looks like they might just be in, trying to see which buff Nautilus is going to start at first. Of course, we did see in MLG Anaheim's Hotshot GG on Nautilus, love starting at that red buff, but instead of going for the blue buff, which Nautilus usually uses to go on his jungle pass, just a little bit quicker. But they are going to notice that no one is over at the red buff. They're not going to really contest anything. Just make sure that Maokai can go back and safely take his own blue. Meanwhile, Unstoppable in the jungle is going to go back blue buff. So nothing too, too much at the level 1. Just a little poke and prod to see what everybody's up to. But pretty much an average start for both teams at the beginning of the game. That's right. Much sound and fury signifying nothing in the level 1 <laughs> team fight right there. Uh, both both junglers just doing a very standard wolves into blue buff start, which is extremely typical for both sides. Nautilus seems to have gotten a slightly better leash and a little bit ahead, but not much of a difference there. One thing I will point out, just for anyone that had a ch maybe had a chance to see this, Unstoppable, He, no if you'll notice, he actually, uh, as standard on jungle Nautilus, he did start with his W, but he actually started his W, he popped his W about three or four seconds before he started doing the Wolves. That's so that that skill would come off of cooldown in time to use it on blue buff. So just a little tip there for anyone who's interested in trying out Jungle Nautilus themselves. And we did see here that uh, AL Josh did not use his smite on the blue buff. He's got a very, very good leash. He is actually going to go straight for his red buff. We could see a potential early gank for Maokai. Something that we don't normally see too much is an early ganking Maokai. If we see if he hits level 3 off of this, if he's going to pick up the twisted advance, and he does. He's going to be swinging back around raids, walking right over a ward, though. So even if he is going for a gank early on Ari, I don't think it's going to be too, too successful, Sola. No, it doesn't look like it. The ping immediately came out, and if you notice, Salsi immediately went to the right side of the lane because he knew that Maokai was in the area. And again, just shows how these teams really are on top of what they're doing. So that gank's not going to be particularly successful. Elsewhere on the map, there was some action in bottom lane. Uh, TSM EVO took a little bit more damage, but again, they have Soraka, so they don't care if they take a little bit more damage. So uh, it, right there, they're sort of back to that uh, sustained fest. And uh, I mean, it's possible that a kill might come out, but uh, right there, uh, the, the stun from J Pack came out on Aphromoo, and he immediately Arcane shifted away, and then that wind just going to try to heal him back up. So, uh, again, we'll see that, like we said, it's the contrast between burst damage and sustain right there. So, we'll try to keep an eye on that lane and see if any major plays come out of it. Yeah, the one thing is Graze has already blown through two health potions trying to get aggressive on that Ezreal Soraka combo, and Aphromoo has just used his first health potion of the game. So, that is a little bit more in favor of the sustain lane for Soraka. They were just going to have to keep an eye on that, like you said, to see how it does unfold. And now Vladimir on the top lane, doing what we saw last game we from uh, what we do actually. It seems that Nautilus is going to be coming in, getting a stun down onto Aeol Naya with that uh, staggering blow. Naya is going to flash away, but he's actually going to be going into egg form here. 
Joss is going to pop out of the jungle, see if he can actually save Anivia. That is not going to happen there. Unstoppable, just too, too tanky. Not going to be going down. And Salty will pick up first blood over there on Anivia. Joss gets extremely, extremely low. Does not want to lose those double buffs and will actually get out of there with his life. But still, first blood for TSM Evo picked up there in that game. Yeah, that's our first big play of the game right there. Just a, a standard Nautilus gank. Unstoppable came around. He was not spotted. He was able to get into a position behind Naya's Anivia. They are able to kill, not not just get the kill on Anivia, but also take out her egg as well. So that will be down for the next five minutes. So we'll be, we'll, uh, dying through egg is never something you want to see early on in the laning phase with Anivia. They also did pop the flash on uh, Absolute Legends Josh as well. So that will make his ganks that much weaker for the next three to four minutes as well. So a really big play there from TSM um, uh, Evo getting first blood. And uh, right now, Ari able to go back and pick up double Doran rings against Anivia with just uh, a Sapphire Crystal. That is a huge advantage in lane. Yeah, it really, really is. Now, panning out to the top lane, we see here that Wukong is actually having a lot of wings with that Vladimir up here. Vladimir did have a chance to push the lane all the way to the tower and then go back. It looks like he's be doing the same exact thing. He picked up boots in addition to a couple more health potions. Meanwhile, Wukong really hasn't been able to do much else besides, you know, he's got one health potion left to his name and his boots. He is getting a little bit of farm against the tower, but Wink the Death it just even has a CS lead ahead of him, just doing a really great job of controlling Wukong in the early game. And as we're talking about in Champions Select, that's when we thought Wukong was going to dominate Vladimir. He, he has to win that matchup early because he's not going to win it later on. He's going to just be out-sustained by Vladimir, but they have sent Maekai up the top. Josh is up there right now, so we'll see if that's going to be able... They're, they're sending him up there to try to help him out, but Unstoppable is right there as well, so we may have a 2 fight up here in top lane any second now. Very interestingly enough, Vladimir went back for a Doran shield. He's going to face check this push into what it happens to two of them there, but Unstoppable is also there. Looks like Wings of Death is getting very low, has to pop the pool to get out of there. Kikumi, please, is a little bit below half health right now. Just kind of ignoring Unstoppable. Really want to get that kill on Wings of Death, but now Unstoppable is going to have to burn his own flash as they change focus. Dredge line will mean he gets out of there A-OK, -okay. so it's actually a pretty good gank here. Mid lane is going to follow up though. Salty now chasing down Naya, popping that ultimate. Naya is not level 6, that egg is down, so Salty in a really good spot. Actually going to be going in on Josh too. Twisted Advance will actually save Naya, but now Josh is in a bad spot. Salty pops the flash to chase after Anivia. Josh is going to fall as unstoppable. Edwing to death come up from around the corner and behind. Now it looks like Salty is going to probably pick up this kill here on Naya. Naya trying to deal a lot of damage. Egg form does come back up, but it's not going to be enough. Naya is actually going to fall again as the three members of TSF Evo just a little bit stronger than the in coordination of the three members of AL right there as they take a quick 3-0 lead in this first game here, Sala. That whole fight was set up really well by Absolute Legends. They almost managed to get a kill on Wings of Death and on Unstoppable. They got both of them very low. The idea there was really good. They managed to get both of them low. They blew both flashes on both of them those champions. So again, the, the whole fight, the whole setup was great, but the reason why they ended up losing that was it really due to the previous fight in mid. It's because Naya's and Nivea was a full level behind Salsi's Ari, so that when that fight sort of continued and the two of them got into it, that one level just made a gigantic difference because of course Salsi mm -hmm. had his ultimate and Naya did not. So that was we the just, difference. Go ahead. We, yeah, I'll say we do see in the bot lane here, we had a little bit of a skirmish between Graze and Ezreal. Both of them getting extremely, extremely low, but Graze, once again, only a couple health potions to his name, whereas Aphrodite is actually pretty fresh on his own still, in addition to those uh, Soraka heals. So they are going to come out a little bit on top of that fight. Aphrodite actually two Doran's blades to his name, whereas Graze actually recalling and picking up his second one now. So Aphrodite just being a little bit stronger than Graze in the bottom lane, has about 14 or 15 more farm than Graze too, in addition to that really that really good heal in addition, and armor buff on Soraka's Astral Blessing. So a very, very uh, close matchup on bottom lane, but Aphrodite just kind of squeaking by because of that Soraka support like you talked about. That. That's right. We did also see Anivia was able to it was it was sort of contested by TSM Evo. T uh, Unstoppable was in the area. He was trying to make a play on it, but he wasn't willing to go in 1v2. So Naya was able to get that, which is really good news for Absolute Legends. If Anivia had her blue buff denied as well, she would really be in trouble. She's already 15 minion kills behind in mid. If you look at the global is a gold total there. Anivia is on 1700, whereas. Uh, Whereas Ari's on 2,500, so that is an 800 gold difference, which is very large right now uh, at this early stage in the game. That's a really big difference. That's about two Doran rings of difference right there between the two. And we do have Josh, uh, the jungle mech guy, is trying to set up for a gank in bottom, but there's a ward right there, so he is spotted. So this probably is not going to be successful, but we'll keep an eye on it just in case. Yeah, Josh is going to kind of kind of run for a bush gank here. JPack is in the other bush, but TSM Evo knows exactly what is up. Aphromu and Nat, and we're going to be content to falling all the way back to the tower to be okay. Meanwhile, in top lane, we see the Unstoppable sneaking around in the bushes up there. These ones are not warded, though. So Kiko Mi, please, has no idea what's going on. We'll see. He's actually not going to be patient enough to just uh, 
sit in that bush and try to wait for the gank though. He is gonna walk right away. Meanwhile, in middle lane, we have Salsi just kind of contesting Anivia, pushing her back, even stealing the enemy's rates over here, just because she has that innate sustain, has a blue buff of her own, and has that early advantage that you were talking about a little bit before. So she is gonna be able to boss them around in the mid lane a little bit. Josh is still waiting down here. Patience as a virtue as ever. Gonna be seeing if he can actually well, jump. Well, he's doing that unstoppable is stealing his red buff up in the jungle up top. So you can, there's just no fear from TSM Evo whatsoever. They know they're ahead in mid and they're ahead in top. So they're able to go and invade in, with impunity. And meanwhile, Josh is just really wasting, he's just fiddling, twist, twiddling his thumbs down there in bottom lane, not accomplishing anything. Uh, and you can see how they're using the, the fact that they know that he's down there to just go in and counter jungle. Anyway, I really like how Wings of Death has been building Vlad in top lane. That Doran shield is a great pickup. It gives him the health regen, and it also gives him extra armor. He's sitting on 87 armor. Uh, Kiko Me Please just can't really do anything with him. And again, we talked about this in Champions. So, like, Vlad is just stacking armor and then out-sustaining him, and he's just easily winning top in that matchup for that very reason. So, unless there's some kind of a gank in top lane, Wukong is really going to be in trouble because Vlad is only getting that much stronger. He just picked up his Hextech Revolver, and it's just a bad, innate matchup between the two champions so it, it really was a little bit strange that with the last pick that absolute legends went for that so again they're going to need to try to do something with Maekai or with anivia to try to flip that matchup or it's just going to continue snowballing in favor of tsm evo yeah evo does really have that top matchup kind of down on lock as you mentioned earlier in the champion select if vladimir just happens to just spiral out of control from the early game he is a champion that's going to be super super dangerous in the later stages of the game mid lane we see a little bit of action as salsi getting dangerously close to naya's tower he's going to take a tower little ultimate frostbite combo from Anivia, but just being able to sustain herself back up with her own passes, Salsi doesn't really look like he's taking all too much damage from this constant harassment on Anivia. No, and again, like we mentioned before, Salsi has that innate sustain on Ari, another champion with sort of an innate ability to steal life, so he, it doesn't really matter if he takes a little bit of harassment from Anivia, as long as he has that blue buff, he's going to be fine. Meanwhile, in down lane, Aphromoo is just doing exactly what he wants to do. He's just poking, poking, poking away with those Mystic Shots and Essence Fluxes, and uh, normally that'll run you out of mana really quick, but of course he has Soraka for that sustain, <laughs> with Nat Nguyen just infusing him over and over again, and that amount of poke has actually forced the bottom lane of Absolute Legends back to base, and the, the time... They did not want to bait back there. They did not want to go to base, but they had no choice. They were forced out of it by TSM Evo. They're going to miss about 10 or so minions at the tower. So that is a lot of farm that's getting denied, and you can see that reflected in the creep score down there. 99 for Aphromoo, and only 66 for Sneaky Caster. So they're really building up that advantage in bottom lane, too. Yeah, that is very true. And of course, Ezreal going with that Essence Plus build, a really, really great harassment tool. So he is just kind of poking and prodding at Graves because they know that Tarek and Graves want to be aggressive on the bottom lane, even though Ezreal has a lot of escapes. So he's building that Essence Flux build just to really harass back and deal a lot of damage. Essence Flux is not going to be hindered like Mystic Shot, where it does not hit minions. So it's going to constantly go through and attack the champions that it wants to target. So by just poking and prodding, they're going to have to go in there and do some sort of harassment back to really make up for it. Soraka is going to heal him back up, give him that armor buff and it's really not going to be a good trade for ALNA. Unstoppable does have the Oracle. He picked it up a minute or two ago. He is going around clearing wards, and it looks like Evo wants to first contest this blue. If you notice, they have four champions around the blue of Absolute Legends, and they actually do have an engage there. JPAC's going to flash over the wall, but Saucy's going to chase him. He does hit the charm. The exhaust comes out, but that is going to be a kill right there. And now they're advancing on to Sneaky Castro. Out comes the flash. Naya getting engaged on as well. Gets frozen in place by the passive of Nautilus. There's the knockup right there. He is in a form, going to fall down. And that should be a free blue buff and possibly a dragon as well for TSM Evo. <laughs> that is a clean two for nothing right there. Actually, going back in there, Josh with a twist advance on the Afro, but he essence plug, oh, sorry, he arcane shit it out of there. And that is actually going to be very, very bad as Graze then goes into his death. Another kill picked up for Unstoppable Nautilus, currently at a 4 0 and 2. As you said before, this is going to be a free blue buff with now two additional members of uh, AL down. That is going to be a possible free dragon right here. And there are no ward coverages either. Even though AL can probably guess this is going on, they have no way to stop it right now. And TS and Evo dominating this game right right now. Really a disaster fight for Absolute Legends right there. They were losing in each lane. They were losing top, losing mid, losing bottom lane. And right there you see TSM Evo basically cashing in their advantage in that fight, allowing them to get that much further ahead. So right now, Absolute Legends needs to make a really big play somewhere on the map because if things continue going on at the current rate, they're going to just get snowballed out of this game. Like I said, they're behind in the lanes. They're down 6,000 global gold, which is a lot for this early in the game. And they're really struggling to win the 1v1 matchups. If you just look at the farm, three people over 100 minion kills for TSM Evo, no one over 100. Anivia actually tops with 81. 
for Absolute Legends. That is a very significant difference. And uh, they're really in a lot of trouble right here. It's not over in the match, but they are in a lot of trouble. Yeah, they are going to have to play from a somewhat behind position right now. And that is not necessarily what they want to do, especially considering the team composition from TSM EVO. They have that Ari, who is she's going to be getting fed, is going to spiral out of control. Vladimir is naturally just a later game champion with the team of play that we talked about a while ago. Any more kills and farm going to Ezreal, of course, is not going to be good because he is an AD carry. And everybody knows that once an AD carry gets a lot of items, they just start hitting like a truck no matter what is going to happen. And then Nautilus out of the jungle with his rampant CC. He hasn't even been contested for this Oracle's Lecture. He picked up earlier that's just going to be a very very bad spot for al to try to come back into this one from what they really need to do is they need to get their bottom lane farmed up anivia needs to really work on her item build and just not be getting harassed out but they really can't do anything right now because maokai is just so much farther behind in the jungle than nautilus that he's not able to really come into lanes and really turn things around with ganks or even support his uh champions they keep getting forced out of lane because a lot of the champions on TSM and Evo have better sustain or they're just further ahead. Again, they really have very strong sustain between Ari, Vladimir, and Soraka in that bottom lane. Uh, the fact that Anivia lost her blue buff is also very, very significant. It's a really big deal. We do actually have a gank coming out here in top though. Yeah, Vladimir is going to take down the tower. He is going to see if he can pick up a kill here. I don't think his pool has been burned yet. He uses the heal and the pool there. Wukong's actually getting extremely low. Wings of Death might try to go in here for a kill. He's going to have to actually run away. Josh is just covering his tail at this point. It only has 75 mana. That's enough for maybe one more spell. Wings of Death is actually going to force two of them back right now. So a level 11 Vladimir forcing away your jungler and your solo top while taking down a tower. I think that's kind of a, a testament to as why TSM Evo is ahead in this game right now. Yeah, TSM Evo really putting on a clinic here. It, again, just showing how far ahead Wings of Death is. That's a straight 1v2, and he's able to not only not die, but he's able to force the 2 to run away from the 1, which is really troublesome. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, Aphromoo and Nat Nguyen are already at the second level tower in bottom lane, and they are just not afraid one bit right now. They're continuing to push this, and they are just farming under the second tower now. Uh, without any real fear that they're going to be ganked, although Josh is coming in. It looks like they are going to back out of this. We'll see if they're able to avoid it. But again, just pressure everywhere on the map right now. Pressure in top lane, pressure in mid, pressure in bottom lane. Not making it easy for anyone on Absolute Legends to farm right now. And again, once you start losing that map control, it becomes very difficult to challenge for Dragons, challenge for Baron, or even uh, there's no ability of Absolute Legends to farm in TSM Evo's jungle. Meanwhile, every all the neutral camps in uh, Absolute Legends jungle are constantly being contested. And they're under threat on all points in time. So we see them losing a lot of that farm. And again, uh, it's all the way, it's up now to an 8,000 gold lead. So it's snowballed a little bit further ahead. And it's only going to get that much worse as these towers continue to go down and give more global gold over the side of the TSM Evo. This mid lane still has a tower up, albeit at very, very low HP. So this could potentially be the next target that TSM Evo is going to try to knock down. As you all that bottom lane, we saw him using the ultimate just to push creeps and farm himself up a little more. I think it's just a testament to how much he doesn't really fear the bottom lane combination of Graze and Tarek at this point. Instead of using that to really deal damage to them, he's just going to farm creeps off of that one. And as a testament to how much farm he's actually gotten, going back and picking up his Infinity Edge doesn't even go for Boots 2 at this point. Meanwhile, Graze picked up his Berserker's Greed, which is the one item that he has that Ezreal does not, in addition to Double Dorans and Vampiric Tifter. So he is just not nearly as farmed up enough as a Ezreal. We mentioned before the creep score 149 to 109 so Ezreal just completely dominating the bottom lane matchup right there. Ezreal's extremely far ahead he's 1500 gold ahead and now we do, Ooh, we do actually coming in yeah. here. Yes, go ahead. Salty going in onto JPAC. JPAC got charmed in everything. A combo will go down and Salty picks up that kill. Not afraid of Maokai and Anivia just kind of running away. Deathfire Strath actually goes off here dealing a lot of damage. Naya is actually going to get egg. Josh is below half HP. Between Salty and Soraka they're actually doing a decent amount of damage. That is the first time we've seen an Aphrom ultimate go onto a champion, taking down Anivia from all the way across the map. Very, very nice snipe there. They get the tower. They get two members of Absolute Legends. Now they are ahead by almost 10k gold. Eight kills to zero. Three towers, possibly a fourth as this middle one is going down right now. And AL is completely on the back foot. They're going to have to pull a miracle out of this one to really start turning back. They're in a very, very weak position right now. You you don't want to fall behind against any team, but it's it's really bad news when you start falling behind Ari because of her mobility. She's very difficult to catch and kill. And once you start stacking up the ability to burst people down like that, we saw the Deathfire Grass used right there by Salty. And Shen just gets that much more painful. We do have a bit of a fight coming out here. He's going to be bleeding, he's getting trapped, he's going to get hit by Eagle Flag. Also, the Pack has got the fucking front of the team right there, not really where he wants to be. Meanwhile, Mayakai going to use his initiation right there. We do have a number of kills coming out. We do see the first kill of the match for Absolute Legends, but not sure that it's going to be worth it. That is a four for one with only Shut Unstoppable down. falling. 
Yeah, even though they took out the Oracle's Elixir, they sacrificed four other members of the team because of it. Now, Kiko may please be the only one up. Everyone on TSM is fairly low, except for Ari. So you might be able to save this inhibitor here. Ari is just going to go in there with a Death Firecraft, full combo, trying to pick up a kill on Wings of Death. Not the target you want to go for as he just pulls away. Salty pops the last uh, skill on his ultimate. And Ezreal giving everybody that increased attack speed from his Essence Bluff. They will take down this inhibitor. TSM Evil is just going to fall back after this one. They are in an extreme, extreme lead right now, so they're probably just going to go back, pick up some items, clear out the jungle of all the buffs, possibly see them taking either a dragon or a baron. Either one of those areas is probably going to be the next big, big team fight, but I don't know if AL is going to have the manpower they really need to contest the SM Evo in these places. Uh, they'll probably try. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to succeed. Uh, they're probably actually more... TSM Evo is probably more interested actually in taking the blue away from Absolute Legends than getting the dragon here. It actually, at this point in time, another thousand gold, not that big a deal. But getting that blue away from Anivia, taking that away from Naya is actually extremely important because if Anivia has blue, Anivia can stall out their pushes. If Anivia doesn't have that, then she's going to run out of mana very quickly. She won't be able to run her Glacial Storm. So this game really has just gotten snowballed out of control in favor of TSM Evo. It would be very difficult for Absolute Legends to come back from this. You can just see how far everyone is ahead on the part of TSM Evo. Again, Infinity Edge Zeal for Ezreal against a BF Sword on the part of Graves. Uh, in terms of mid, Death Fire Grass, Abyssal Scepter against a Rod of Ages. That's an, another full item complete there. In top lane, Vladimir has Will of the Ancients. He has a, a ton of armor between the Doran Shield, his runes, and that Chain Vest. And then he's also got a needlessly large rod up against uh, up against just a Brutalizer and a couple of Doran's Blades on Kiko Mipleese's Wukong up there on top. So really, just really far ahead in every lane. They can force the action wherever they want. I would expect to see it in Evo with the Oracle. They have re-picked re up the Oracle on Unstoppable. I would expect that they would just shove the lanes out and then force the Baron fight. Well, very interesting. Here we see Saucy just going into a three versus one and taking down Graves right there. So between Anivia, Tarek, and Graves, uh, Ari just came out on top of them right there. This is a testament to how BB Salty is right now. 6 0 and 6. Death Fire's Grass, Abyssal Scepter, Sorcerer's Shoes, Double Doran's Ring. I think that is an Ari that is very, very, very scary to Absolute Legends right now. And I don't really know if they have anything to really deal with it because the Anivia counterpart in the middle lane is just not living up to what they expected to be. We saw Graves fall down extremely quick at that, dealing too, too much damage back. As you mentioned, the item build on Graves, very, very, very subpar compared to the item build on Aphromoo right now. So just not where they want to be right now. TS and Evo with one member of AL down is going to try to push into the tower and engage comes out, Nivet takes a ton of damage, Nautilus is taking power fast, so he is going to have to fly away, immediately goes back with the Death Card though, will knock off Maokai, that lets Aphrodite finish him off for another kill, Kiko be pleased goes in there with the ultimate, he's not really able to disrupt or deal any damage, and Nivet getting egged and instantly killed right there, uh, Nat to win, Soraka actually pick up that kill, and that is currently three members of AL down for none on TSM Evo. Yeah, you, you know that you're having a rough game when uh, Soraka is going in and getting a kill, and it's 17 to 1 with Soraka having as many kills as your whole team. Uh, that's just not the place that AL wants to be. Unfortunately, Graves will fall. They are taking down the inhibitor, taking down Nexus Turrets. This could possibly be game number one for TSM Evo, and AL, they're actually putting out the forfeit vote now. They're going to just recollect themselves and see what they can do as we're about to go into game two for both these teams. No, that one was that one was simply Victory. over. TSM Evo just won all of the solo lanes, and they just uh, put their foot on the pedal and just snowballed it from there. That was a clear dominant victory on their part. Very impressively played. Mm -hmm. That was very.